Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine brought to you by AACC and the Clinical Chemistry Trainee Council. View this and many more pearls as well as other free educational material at traineecouncil.org. Hello, my name is Christy Smock. I'm an Associate Professor of Pathology at the University of Utah Department of Pathology and a Medical Director for the Hemostasis Thrombosis Laboratory at ARUP Laboratories. Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine on von Willebrand's disease. Von Willebrand factor is a multimeric protein that mediates adhesion of platelets at sites of vascular injury. Their injury by interacting with exposed collagen and the platelet glycoprotein 1B, otherwise known as GP1B, receptor on the platelet surface. Circulating von Willebrand factor in the bloodstream does not interact strongly with platelets. Collagen is not exposed to the bloodstream in normal conditions. When there is vascular injury, von Willebrand factor becomes tethered to exposed collagen via its collagen binding domains, and the shear forces of flowing blood induce a conformational change that expose the von Willebrand factor platelet binding domains, helping platelets adhere to the site of injury. The high molecular weight forms, abbreviated HMW, of von Willebrand factor are composed of more von Willebrand factor subunits and have greater ability to bind to ligands such as collagen and platelets than the smaller low molecular weight forms. Von Willebrand factor is also a carrier for coagulation factor 8 and is essential for maintaining normal factor 8 levels. Von Willebrand disease is due to deficiency, a quantitative problem, or dysfunction, a qualitative problem of von Willebrand factor, or a combination of deficiency and dysfunction. The abnormalities result in defective platelet adhesion at sites of injury and a mucocutaneous bleeding pattern, which could include manifestations such as epistaxis, or nosebleeds, menorrhagia, heavy menstrual periods, or easy bruising. Factor VIII levels are also low in many cases. Von Willebrand's disease is one of the most common inherited bleeding disorders and is usually transmitted in an autosomal dominant fashion, although there are also autosomal recessive forms. Von Willebrand's disease can be acquired with certain underlying medical conditions. The discussion today will focus on inherited forms of von Willebrand's disease. Von Willebrand disease is genetically and phenotypically heterogeneous. Type 1 von Willebrand disease is characterized by deficiency of von Willebrand factor due to decreased von Willebrand factor production, abnormal secretion, or increased degradation. And symptoms can vary from mild to severe, depending on the degree of deficiency. The protein that is present functions normally. Type 3 von Willebrand disease is a severe bleeding disorder characterized by absence of von Willebrand factor. The type 2 subtypes of von Willebrand disease are caused by functional abnormalities of von Willebrand factor due to an abnormal multimeric pattern, which can be due to problems with multimerization at the time of synthesis, or increased clearance of larger multimers abnormal platelet binding, abnormal collagen binding, or abnormal factor VIII binding. In type 2 subtypes, the dysfunctional von Willebrand factor is also often present in reduced amounts. The mutations that cause type 2 forms of von Willebrand disease are typically restricted to specific regions of the gene. For instance, forms with abnormal platelet binding have mutations in gene regions that code for platelet binding, such as exon 28. An initial hemostasis evaluation in a patient with a suspected bleeding disorder typically includes platelet count, prothrombin time, activated partial thromboplastin time, and often fibrinogen. The platelet count is normal in most forms of von Willebrand disease, with the exception of type 2B and platelet type, also known as pseudo-von Willebrand disease, which are characterized by gain-of-function mutations that cause increased von Willebrand factor platelet interaction and subsequent clearance of high molecular weight multimers and platelets. The APTT is often normal in von Willebrand disease, but is prolonged in more severe forms, where factor VIII activity is significantly decreased. Thus, von Willebrand disease is in the differential for someone with a prolonged PTT, but this is not a sensitive way to identify all von Willebrand disease cases. Type 2N von Willebrand disease is characterized by decreased factor VIII binding and may have normal von Willebrand factor antigen levels, but with low factor VIII and a prolonged PTT. This subtype often mimics hemophilia A, inherited factor VIII deficiency. 
point-of-care platelet function tests that may be performed as part of an initial workup, such as the PSA 100 device, are usually normal in mild or moderate von Willebrand disease and abnormal in more severe forms. If there is strong suspicion of von Willebrand's disease based on the clinical history or initial laboratory test, which may be normal, then a von Willebrand disease testing panel should be performed. This should include measuring von Willebrand factor antigen performed by immunoassay, von Willebrand factor activity, and factor VIII activity. Because von Willebrand factor has several functions, there are several different types of activity, functional tests. One of the more common methods is known as risposteatin cofactor activity and will be described in more detail on the next slide. Von Willebrand factor multimeric analysis is an electrophoresis test that allows visualization of the size distribution of von Willebrand factor multimers in patient plasma. It is used for subtyping of von Willebrand disease since certain type 2 subtypes are associated with multimeric abnormalities due to missing high or high and intermediate molecular weight multimers. The initial von Willebrand disease testing panel is often sufficient for diagnosis and subtyping, but additional testing may be needed in some cases, and there are a number of specialized follow-up tests that can be pursued when indicated. These can include tests such as low-dose ristocetin-induced platelet aggregation, low-dose RIPA, to detect gain-of-function von Willebrand factor abnormalities, collagen binding activity, factor VIII binding activity, or genetic testing. Genetic testing can be helpful for diagnosis of difficult type 2 von Willebrand disease cases since type 2 mutations are located in specific regions of the gene corresponding to the affected von Willebrand factor function. Sequencing of the entire von Willebrand factor gene is not widely available and is done only rarely in current practice. This slide depicts the methodology for von Willebrand factor risposteatin cofactor activity, abbreviated VWF RCO, which is one of the most commonly used methods for assessing von Willebrand factor activity. In this test, risposteatin is used to convert patient plasma von Willebrand factor to its active platelet binding conformation. Agglutination of formal and fixed reagent platelets is dependent on von Willebrand factor amount, ability to interact with platelets through the platelet binding domain, and presence of the larger, more functional multimers. The reagent is a turbid platelet suspension, and patient von Willebrand factor activity results in decreased turbidity as it causes platelet agglutination and settling of platelet agglutinates out of the reaction. There are also tests that measure von Willebrand factor platelet binding activity without the use of ristocetin. Slide 8 contains an image of the von Willebrand factor multimers test by gel electrophoresis. After the electrophoresis step, migrated von Willebrand factor is visualized using an anti-von Willebrand factor antibody and a second peroxidase-labeled antibody and specific substrate. Lane 1 is highlighted and demonstrates a normal multimeric distribution with the high molecular weight multimers migrating near the point of application at the bottom of this gel, while the smaller multimers migrate further. Lane 2 shows an abnormal multimeric distribution with missing high molecular weight multimers, which can be seen in certain type 2 subtypes, such as 2A, 2B, and platelet type. Lane 10 shows the specimen with low von Willebrand factor, but the full spectrum of von Willebrand factor multimeric sizes, typical of type 1 von Willebrand's disease. Type 1 von Willebrand disease is the most common subtype, accounting for approximately 80% of the cases, and is characterized by a partial quantitative deficiency of von Willebrand factor. The bleeding symptoms are often mild, but can also be moderate or severe due to the genetic and phenotypic heterogeneity of the disease. The table and images on this slide show that in type 1, there is decreased von Willebrand factor protein, as measured by von Willebrand factor antigen, and decreased activity, as measured by von Willebrand factor ristocetin cofactor activity in this example due to the deficiency. Thus, in this subtype, the antigen amount and function are decreased proportionately, and factor VIII activity may also be low, which could result in a prolonged PTT. The multimeric test shows decreased intensity of staining correlating with the deficiency, but all multimer sizes are present. One of the challenges of diagnosing milder type 1 cases 
is the acute phase properties of von Willebrand factor, which can raise von Willebrand factor levels above the patient's normal baseline values and confound the diagnosis. In addition, because mildly decreased von Willebrand factor values of approximately 30 to 50 percent of normal may be asymptomatic or associated with only minimal symptoms, these cases are often classified as low von Willebrand factor, but can be diagnosed as von Willebrand disease if there is a strong clinical history. Von Willebrand factor values less than 20 to 30 percent of normal are generally associated with bleeding symptoms and diagnosed as von Willebrand disease. Laboratories that perform von Willebrand disease testing must handle specimens with care, especially when thawing frozen plasma for testing, as von Willebrand factor can precipitate during the thawing process, inducing abnormalities that could lead to misdiagnosis. Von Willebrand factor is absent in type 3 von Willebrand disease, which accounts for less than 5% of the cases and this results in a severe bleeding disorder. Factor VIII is also markedly decreased due to lack of von Willebrand factor as a carrier protein, resulting in a prolonged APTT in type three patients. The type two subtypes account for 10 to 15% of von Willebrand disease cases and are defined by qualitative abnormalities, dysfunctional von Willebrand factor, which can be due to multimeric defects where the larger, more functional multimers are absent or loss of function mutations causing decreased platelet, collagen, or factor VIII binding. These defects, along with associated subtypes, are listed on the slide. In type 2B and platelet type, large multimers are absent due to increased interaction with platelets, resulting in clearance of large von Willebrand factor and platelets. The bleeding symptoms are generally mild to moderate. As discussed on slide 9, Type 1 von Willebrand disease results from a von Willebrand factor deficiency and results in concordant decreases in von Willebrand factor antigen and activity. Because most type 2 subtypes demonstrate decreased platelet binding activity that is out of proportion to the von Willebrand factor antigen level due to missing large multimers or mutations specifically affecting the platelet binding domains, a decreased activity to antigen ratio raises suspicion of a type 2 subtype. As an example, a von Willebrand factor ristocetin cofactor activity to von Willebrand factor antigen ratio of less than 0.5 to 0.7 suggests dysfunctional von Willebrand factor and prompts additional testing such as multimeric analysis. Because a comprehensive review of each von Willebrand disease subtype is outside of the scope of this presentation, type 2A will be presented in more detail as a type 2 example. This subtype is caused by a variety of mutations that result in decreased assembly or secretion or increased degradation of larger multimers. The multimeric defect, classically absence of both high and intermediate molecular weight multimers, can be seen by electrophoresis. Although the von Willebrand factor antigen is decreased, smaller multimers are present and are measured antigenically. The missing large multimers which are more functional than the smaller multimers, results in a disproportionate decrease in platelet binding activity as compared to the antigen. This slide depicts the laboratory data from a patient with type 2A von Willebrand's disease, including the multimeric defect highlighted in position 5 on the gel and the discordant von Willebrand factor activity and antigen, resulting in a decreased activity to antigen ratio. With normal von Willebrand factor function, the protein amount and activity would be similar. It should be noted that accurate subtyping of von Willebrand's disease is important since the subtype directs treatment choice. Treatment can include desmopressin, or DDAVP, which releases endothelial von Willebrand factor stores, von Willebrand factor replacement with plasma-derived or recombinant concentrates, von Willebrand factor containing blood products, and hormonal therapies to increase von Willebrand factor levels. DDAVP is generally not used to treat type 2, the qualitative, subtypes of von Willebrand disease, since releasing stores of abnormal von Willebrand factor is unlikely to be helpful. DDAVP treatment can also worsen thrombocytopenia in type 2B due to acute release of von Willebrand factor with an abnormally high affinity for platelets. When von Willebrand factor replacement is required, specific von Willebrand factor concentrates are preferred over blood products 
which are only used when other treatment options are unavailable. Thank you for joining me on this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine on von Willebrand disease. For more like this, as well as articles, podcasts, and more, please visit the Trainee Council at traineecouncil.org.